So hey guys, welcome to our channel Fiction Domain. And also welcome to the another amazing story on what if Naruto had the power of Amaterasu, Tsukiyomi and Susanoo. Here is short summary. Starts at the wave mission. Naruto is better, smarter and stronger than canon. He realizes that Sakura is a waste of his time and decided to get serious with his training. He related to Amaterasu, Tsukiyomi and Susanoo. It will be a six-girl harem. Sakura, Hinata and Tenten are not allowed in. I have plans for them. Ino is already in, you guys choose the rest. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The blonde-haired boy could be seen walking beside a girl with crazy bright bubblegum pink hair and pale skin. On the other side of the girl was another boy with black hair, this one's hair shaped like a duck's butt. In front of them reading a orange book and giggling was a man with spiky gravity defying gray hair. In the middle of the three was a man drinking out of a bottle with a straw hat on his head and thick black framed glasses on his face. This man is Tazuna the bridge builder from the small country of Wave. The three teens are Haruno Sakura, Ichiha Sasuke, and Yuzumaki Naruto. The man reading is Hata Kakashi, and together they make Team 7, and this was their first C-rank mission. So far it seemed normal as they escorted Tazuna to his village. Sakura was pestering Sasuke for a date, Sasuke was brooding, and Naruto was rethinking his life choices, mainly his quickly diminishing crush on Sakura. The walking past a puddle stopped, as his brain registered the fact that it hadn't rained in months, and his nose could detect scents in the puddle. The shaking his head, pulled a kunai out from his pocket and said okay idiots, come out, as your jinjutsu sucks because a puddle when it hasn't rained in months is kinda stupid. His team besides Kakashi looked at him strangely, until two men with clawed gauntlets rose from the puddle with mask on. Before they could even attack, Naruto knocked both of them out, with the blunt side of his kunai. Sighing he tied the two idiots up and searched them for anything useful. Finding some good things, he turned to Kakashi and said Kakashi-sensei these two are members of the Mist Demons. Kakashi nodding turned to Tazuna who was sweating and asked why are two C-rank missing men and prominent members of the Mist Demons after you Tazuna-san? Azuna dropping to his knees spilled the beans about his country being under the ruthless thumb of Gato, the tiny tyrant. He also admitted to lying about the rank of the mission. He then tried the guilt trip by saying that they didn't have to help him, he would just go on and be killed, making his poor daughter and grandson swear vengeance on Kanoha. The Kashi sighing took a vote with his team to consider if they should go on or not. Sasuke wanting to gain his Dejutsu voted to continue on. Sakura being the ever-loyal fangirl followed Sasuke's lead. Naruto not wanting to Gato to continue and a press wave voted to press onward. Akashi sighing said that they were continuing the mission, but he was sending for backup, hopefully another team, or maybe an Anbu or two. After crossing a bridge on a boat being moved by Or, Team 7 made their way to the mainland, and Sasuke trying to show off through a kunai into the bush. The moving the bush scowled spotting a snow white bunny basically terrified for life. Naruto and Kakashi both spotting the coat of the bunny, instantly were on guard, knowing that something was up. Seconds later Naruto tackled Tazuna down to the ground while shouting get down. Bakashi did the same for Sakura and Sasuke. There in the tree not far from them was a huge sword, with two holes in it. Standing on the blade was a man of about six feet with no shirt on, tanned skin, spiky black hair, and bandages wrapped around his face. Bakashi spotting the man cursed and said Mamachi's Abusa, leader of the mist demons, legendary demon of the bloody mist, and one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. Why are you here? Zabuza snorting said Sharingan no Kakashi, no wonder those two failed, you're here. Oh well hand over the old man and no one has to die. Kakashi sighing said I'm afraid I can't do that, because it would look bad so. Zabuza shaking his head said, don't say I didn't warn you. He then jumped down into the water and did the infamous hidden miss jutsu. Naruto getting in front of Tizuna started to spread his senses, trying to get ready for an attack, ignoring the killing intent pouring from Kakashi and Zabuza. His ears hearing Sasuke tremble, said team stop trembling, Kakashi's got this, he's not gonna let any of us die. His words were confirmed when Kakashi said Naruto is right. Calm down I won't let anything happen to my cute little genin. Zabuza's voice could then be heard as he said, so you say Kakashi. Now there's eight lethal points I can strike. Naruto's ears picking up a whooshing sound, quickly moved to the middle of the formation and blocked a heavy blow from Zabuza's sword. Naruto grunting in effort said not happening no brows. Bakashi then appeared and stabbed the man in the gut, while I smiling at Naruto. Zabuza then turned into a water clone, and Kakashi was sliced in half by Zabuza. Naruto wasn't surprised when Kakashi himself turned into water. Soon Kakashi was trapped in a water prison by Zabuza, who had created two more water clones. 
Naruto seeing this, spammed 16 clones of his own and pulled out a large windmill-shaped shuriken. Tossing it, he watched as it sliced through one of the water clones that was being distracted and sliced through two of his own clones that were holding the other water clone still. It then went sailing at the real Zabuza who caught it with his right hand with a smug smirk on his face. His eyes widened when another shuriken was heading his way. He jumping over this one, felt his eyes widen when a Naruto clone appeared where the first shuriken had been, holding a kunai, and another clone appeared above him holding two kunai-like daggers heading straight down. His eyes widened even more when two more clones appeared out of the water ready to punch him. As for the other shuriken it transformed into a clone of Naruto who spinning in the air, tossed a real demon will shuriken its abusa. The man deflected the first clone with a kunai, got stabbed by the two kunai in his shoulders, and head-butted the Naruto who did so, and stomped on both of clones from below. He was then forced to let go of the prison when the shuriken embedded itself in his back. The growling glared at Naruto who was smirking at him for some reason. He then noticed that Kakashi was now beside the brat with wide eyes. He wondering why gained wide eyes suddenly sensing a buildup of chakra. Looking around, he didn't see anything. He then looking down gained wide eyes, spotting six clones glowing with chakra. He cursed when he heard Naruto say great exploding clone jutsu. He was then launched backwards from the explosion. The flipping over was literally steaming mad. He started going through hand signs and was shocked when Naruto and Kakashi both started going through their own hand signs. He finishing his cried out water style, water dragon jutsu. His jaw dropped when he heard Kakashi cry out water style, water dragon jutsu. He blanched when he heard Naruto cry out water style, water shark bomb jutsu. Two water dragons were dueling when suddenly a huge shark made of water blasted through both water dragons and rocketed towards Zabuza. Zabuza getting hit by the water shark cursed and screamed when his back collided with the trunk of a tree. Kakashi appearing in front of him I smiled and was about to finish him when three senbin pierced his neck. The hunter nin appeared thanked team seven for their help then vanished. Kakashi lowering his headband walked two steps before he collapsed. Naruto shaking his head walked over to the man and put the man's arm around him and asked Azuna is your house near? Azuna nodding lead team 7 to his home. Naruto carrying Kakashi into the room Tsunami suggested, laid the man in the bed and then got into a bed himself as he was more tired than he thought. He would wake up the next morning to find Kakashi looking at him with interest. He turning his head rolled his eyes spotting Sasuke glaring at him with jealous eyes and Sakura Jutz playing out glaring at him. Be sitting up asks so when do we start training because you and I both know that isn't the last we've seen of Zabuza. Bakashi I smiling at Naruto and ignoring the wide eyes of his other two students, said I was waiting for you to wake up so that we could start our training. Come on. Naruto nodding got up and followed Kakashi into the woods surrounding Tazuna's home. Heading to some trees Kakashi explained what they were about to do. Naruto blinking asked is there anything else you're going to teach us and say because I already know tree walking and started on the water walking exercise. In order to do the water shark bomb jutsu, I had to have good chakra control. Bakashi hearing this smiled and said please show me that you can do them. Naruto nodding ran up to the nearest tree and ran up it with ease, reaching the top and flipping off with ease. Landing in front of the seething Sasuke asked, is that enough proof sensei? Bakashi nodding said yes it is, well then since you've got that down, I'll get you some training. He then reached into his pocket and pulled out a sheet of paper. He seeing the looks in their eyes, explained what the paper was and how it worked. He demonstrated and revealed that he had a dual affinity for lightning and fire. He then handed the paper to Naruto and informed Naruto what to do. Naruto doing as he was told, pushed a little chakra into the paper and was shocked when it did several things. First it split into seven different pieces. The first five were normal elemental affinities. The sixth piece turned into the shape of a snarling wolf and even howled, the seventh piece turned into miniature storm, with rain, thunder, wind, and lightning. Naruto looking up at the shock Kakashi asked okay I get the first five, meaning I have an affinity to all five of the basic elements, but I have no idea about the last two. Kakashi shaking his head himself said I'm just as confused as your Naruto, but I can help you with all five of the main affinities. We'll start with fire and lightning, and define water. Then we'll move to earth and wind. Naruto nodding, did as Kakashi instructed, ignoring the heavy scowl on Sasuke's face and the glare Sakura was sending him. Five hours later and Naruto was glaring at Leaf that would not split. He had already mastered the fire, lightning, water, and earth manipulation practice that Kakashi had given him, but the damn wind one was giving him problems. Kakashi had even given Naruto a few jutsu in all of the elements he had mastered. He had already learned most of them, except the one Kakashi himself wanted to teach him, the lightning blade or something like that. He sighing again as Kakashi had gone to check on Sasuke and Sakura. Speaking of that got him back to thinking about his life choices, mainly his stupid crush on Sakura. 
the closing his eyes really thought about why he had even liked Sakura and could only come up with one reason. The first day they had meet she was a nice shy girl that didn't instantly call him a monster or beat on him like the rest of the kids did. After that day she became like the rest and he had been trying to get her to go back to how she was. Sighing he laid back in the clearing and decided that he was pushing women out of his mind and focusing on his shinobi career. Nodding to himself he went back to his leaf. Later that day when he managed to drag himself back into Tazuna's home, he noticed that Sasuke was face down on the table and Sakura looked like she hadn't done a thing. Sighing he helped himself to a plate of Tsunami's food. Smiling at how delicious it was he complimented her on it. Once done with the dinner he was about to excuse himself when his ears picked up the sound of someone singing. It sounded like a lullaby and for some reason he felt compelled to find the source of the music. Shaking his head he put some earplugs in his ears and went to his room and went to sleep. Two days later and Naruto was standing beside Tazuna as the man was told by a worker that he was quitting. Naruto sighing asked Tazuna-san how many workers do you need? Tazuna sighing said about 350, why brat? Naruto crossing his fingers cried out multi-shadow clone jutsu. A huge poof of smoke occurred and when it cleared over 500 Naruto's could be seen standing. Naruto nodding said here you are 500 workers. Show them what to do and they'll get to work. Each one of them can make clones, so don't worry about tiring them out. Also some of them are most likely going to make some clones and help the villagers out. He then walked over to the nearest tree and leaned against it, ignoring the gobsmacked look on Tazuna's face. About an hour later he opened his eyes smelling the smoke from tobacco, flowers, deer and food. He could also smell sword polish and medicine. This was most likely the backup Kakashi had sent for. He standing up moved to the bridge and blinked spotting Team 10 with a sickly looking man. He walking towards the mask you guys are the backup. Shikamaru sighing said yes we are, why are you the only one guarding Tazuna-san? Naruto sighing himself said because I'm a one-man army and because Sakura refuses to train without Kakashi looking over her shoulder the entire time. He then gaining a serious look on his face, explained everything to Asuma and Hade. Asuma hearing this said alright thanks for the briefing and since I'm a wind user myself, why don't I help you with the leaf exercise? Naruto hearing this smiled and said thank you Asuma-sensei I would be honored. Asuma giving Team 10 their jobs then sat down and explained Wind Chakra to Naruto. Naruto after hearing the explanation, did split the leaf in one try, but creating some clones decided to do it until he mastered it. When he finally dragged himself into Tazuna's home, he smiled at Tsunami and thanked her for once again fixing a delicious meal. The dinner was going fine until Inari, Tazuna's grandson started shooting off at the mouth about how none of them knew anything about suffering and that they were all just wasting their time. Something in Naruto just snapped and he quickly told the little brat off. He informed Inari of Sasuke's life, Kakashi's life, and finally his own life. His final words were that someone always has it worse than you do. He then stormed out of the house, ignoring the tears flowing from Ino's eyes and the rage in Asuma's, Haters, Shikamaru's, Chaoji's, Kakashi's and Tazuna's eyes. He was sitting in the clearing he had been training in all week when once again his ears picked up the sound of someone singing a lullaby. This time his eyes glossed over and like he was in a trance, he started to follow the sound of the voice. He didn't even notice when he started to walk over a very large very deep body of water. He didn't even notice when he walked through a whirlpool and into some destroyed village. He just kept walling until he marched right into the eye of the powerful storm. He finally regained control over his body. Shaking his head he gained wide eyes spotting three beautiful women standing in front of him. The one that was still singing had long flowing silver hair tied into a top knot. She had kind purple eyes and perfect fair skin. She had the perfect herdless figure that was wrapped in a high-collared kimono that was as black as the night. The next woman had short spiky red hair dark brown skin and orange glowing eyes. She also had the perfect herdless figure, but she wasn't wearing a kimono. No she had on a pair of black jeans that looked like they had seen better days. A red t-shirt with the image of a smirking sun on it. She also had on a pair of black and red high top Air Force Ones. Around her waist was a golden belt with the insignia for flames on it. The last of the three women had shoulder-length dark purple hair, pale skin, and dark blue eyes. She like the other two had the perfect herdless figure and like the first was wrapped in a light grey and yellow kimono. The first woman ending her singing turned to Naruto and smiled. The third woman was also smiling at him while the second woman simply smirked at him. He looking around finally noticed his surroundings, he was about to flip out when the third woman said welcome Naruto to the former home of your mother and home of your ancestors. This is the land of the swirling tides and where I and my two sisters grew up at. Naruto hearing this blinked and asked who are you lady? She smiling said I am Susanoo but the mortal world knows me as Yuzumaki Kashina that is also what Kanoha knows me. 
Truly I am the goddess of the storms and one of the celestial trio. The title I'm most proud of though is your mother. Naruto blinked hearing this and narrowed his eyes. Be growling said if you're my mother then tell me something only she would know. Tsusanu giggling said those whisker marks aren't your birthmarks, your real birthmark is the black lightning mark in the corner of your right hand, along with the purple crescent moon on the center of your left hand. Naruto blinked hearing this and said okay you're legit as the only other person who knows about those is am me and the old man. Tsusanu giggling opened her arms asked can mama have a hug from her precious baby boy. Naruto sighing walked into the hug and instantly regretted it as he was being squeezed to death by his mom. He trying to break free and stop himself from turning blue, cried out sweet baby Jesus, I can't breath. I now know how that damn demon cat feels. He was then let go and he started to suck in air, like a vacuum. Shaking his head he turned to the first woman and asked okay who the hell are you? She giggling said I am your aunt and goddess of the moon Tsukiyomi, but you can call me auntie or awesome. Naruto sweat dropped at this and turned to the second woman who yawned and said I'm a Matarasu goddess of the sun and your aunt. Naruto hearing this felt the sweat drop get bigger. Shaking his head he asked okay now that I know that, why am I here? Susanu smiling said it's time we unlock your true potential and inform you of not only your powers, but your royal status. Naruto blinked hearing this and asked what powers? What royal status, what true potential? Tsukiyomi giggling said you my nephew are the crown prince of the very heavens. The moon guides your every movement and empowers you. The might of the sun flows through your body as you wield the unique ability to use the very power of the sun. Born from the union of the storm and a noble man, with ties to the powerful Senju clan. Naruto eyes were wide hearing this. The Madarasu picking up from there said you have the power of the wolf buried inside of you, just waiting to come out. This comes from Tsukiyomi as wolves are very heavily tied to the moon. You also have my own bloodline called Supernova Release. This basically makes your fire attacks 10 times more powerful than before. You can also make attacks that equal the power of the sun. You also gain diamond hard skin from me as a gift when you were born. Naruto's jaw was wide open. Susanu then said you have the true storm release, meaning you actually create storms instead of wimpy laser lights like those people from Kumo. You can also create lightning of different colors and intensities, along with winds of different nature and rain of different style. You also gain super strength and super speed from me. Because of you having the Kaiubi sealed into you by the Shinigami, you have also gained a powerful alignment for the demonic arts and the dream of every swordsman alive. A weapon made of your very soul. From your father you gain the legendary swift release and the Hiroshin no Jutsu. Ami herself has decided to give you the chaos release, which has different uses and was only ever used by the legendary immortal Shadow the Hedgehog. Naruto's jaw was now touching the floor. Tsukiyomi then said as you have already seen you have a strong alignment with the five basic elemental affinities. This is so that you can recreate every single supposed bloodline Jutsu, including the Mokuten. Most of these will unlock when you transform into your wolf form. By the way, you'll have a full wolf form, half wolf form, which is called werewolf or lichen, and partial forms. The first time you transform into any of the wolf forms will hurt like nothing you've ever felt before. Oh by the way you'll become very territorial. Oh and my birthday present to you is a summoning contract of any being at any point. Naruto's jaw was now buried in the ground. The Madarasu shaking her head said, my present to you is a new outfit. Anyway you'll also be getting a scroll with in-debt details of the millions of Uzumaki Jutsu, including Kenjutsu, Ninjutsu, Tujutsu, Jinjutsu, Kenjutsu, Fuinjutsu, and Iryujutsu. Your stuff as we speak is getting moved into your new home which is a palace fit for a king. It's where the old Ichiha compound used to be. Oh and I got you a pet that I think you're going to like. Susanu ignoring Naruto's jaw going deeper into the ground, said as for your true potential being unlocked, well that's the other reason the three of us are here. It's time to retrain you from the bottom up, yes that includes manners and fashion. Naruto closed his mouth hearing this and took a step back in fear. He then blanched when Tsukiyomi started to cackle as she said, we start with that hideous orange monstrosity you are wearing, followed by your choice in females. He took another step back in fear when the other two joined in the evil laughter. He didn't know it, but inside of the seal on his stomach, the Kaiubi was already praying for its container's soul, as the looks on their faces could and would terrify Ichiha Madara and Senju Hashirama. Two days later, Naruto was rushing towards the bridge after saving Tsunami and Inari from some punks Gato had sent to kidnap them. He was pushing himself as fast as he could go, hoping to make it in time to save his comrades. Landing on the bridge he rolled his eyes spotting the thick mist all around him. Ignoring this he ran towards where he felt Sasuke's and Hate's chakra signatures. Arriving outside of a dome made of ice mirrors, he peeked inside and gasped spotting both Sasuke and Hate littered with needles. His eyes widened even more when Hate sacrificed himself for Sasuke, who was shaking in fear. 
Rushing in he deflected all of the senbon and said oi team snap out of it. Sasu hearing Naruto's voice looked up and gasps butting him inside of the dome. Naruto getting back to back with Sasuke said we work together on this one Sasuke. Sasuke nodding started to attack the mirrors with Naruto's help. Sasuke still ended up being knocked out, leaving just Naruto. Naruto scowling said well shit. I guess it's time to reveal the power of the sun. He jumping high into the air, actually breaking free of the dome, gathered fire chakra into his hand. Closing his eyes he focused on the ice dome and started to push some of his supernova chakra into the hand. Opening his eyes he made a fireball the size of baseball appear in his hand. He rearing back with it cried out supernova style, intensity. He then tossed a fireball into the ice dome and crushed his hand. It worked just like he planned, the user of the ice mirrors was blasted out of the dome, as it melted, third degree burns all over the person's body. Sasuke and the body of hate were just fine. Naruto then landing rushed towards the badly burned person and appearing in front of the person said, forgive me. Hato, number 4 by Akurai. The person never even had the chance to scream as from Naruto's fingertips, a pale blast of lightning pierced the head, the brain and came out the other side. Naruto ignoring the bile rising to his throat rushed towards Kakashi's fight. He arrived just in time for both Kakashi and Asuma to jump back. He landing in front of them, looked them over and frowned spotting the damage both men had taken. Shaking his head he focused on the mist, knowing that Zabuza was in there. He then heard well if it isn't the brat from before. Now that you're here my apprentice can stop playing with the duck butt. Naruto snorting said I hate to inform you of this, but your apprentice is dead, by my own hands. He heard a arrogant laugh and Zabuza say ha as if brat. I trained him myself, and he could beat me if he tried. Naruto rolling his eyes as he had finally found the man said well you ask him yourself once you join him. Pushing lightning chakra into his hand he cried out lightning style, hungry wolf jutsu. The jutsu launched into the mist, and seconds later a loud pain-filled scream could be heard. The mist then slowly cleared out, and Kakashi and Asuma were shocked. Barely standing not feet from them was Zabuza clutching his right side that was still sparking with lightning. Turning they gasped spotting the body of Zabuza's apprentice and Hade. Sasuke was on the ground knocked out if the breathing was anything to go by. Zabuza growling said you damn brat that's twice I've lost to you. Naruto once again ignoring the bile in his throat, said that's right, as I will not allow anyone to hurt my comrades or my team. Die demon of the hidden mist. Zabuza was about to growl out something when clapping could be heard. All eyes turned to the end of the bridge. Standing there was short man in a business suit with a cane in his right hand and a smug smirk on his face. This was Gato, and behind him was an army of thugs. The laughing said well it looks like arrived at the right time. Now my thugs can kill the men, and I can have my way with the blonde girl and maybe the pink-haired thing, if it behaves. Naruto hearing this for some reason felt some anger boil in him. Beto looking at the dead body of Hade, and Haku laughed and said stupid shinobi thinking that you're important. I bet you that I could probably take the pale one's corpse and fetch a good chunk of money. I wonder if he has any significant others. If so I can make them think that I'm going to give the body to them, and then kidnap and make them my little whore. Naruto hearing this actually heard himself growl. Beto turning to Tazuna who was being guarded by Shikamaru, Chaoji, Sakura and Ino said after the shinobi are dead, I'll have my thugs bring me your little family. I'll kill the little brat first, then I'll let my men have their way with that slut for a daughter you have Tazuna, before I chop her head off and kill you. He then started to laugh very loudly. Naruto now growling very loudly, could feel something primal, something feral, something powerful trying to break free. Beto then sealed his fate when he said you know I think I'll agree to what that strange snake man planned. Once I'm done here I'll start kidnapping people from the village hidden in the leaves, keep them for a couple of days, have my way with the women, and then sell both the men and women. Unless the woman catches my eyes, then I'll just make her my whore. In Naruto's mind when Gato said this, Naruto instantly pictured A.M. being raped by this pig of a man. That was the final push Naruto needed. Naruto stopped growling and screamed in pain as his body started to burn up. He hadn't noticed how all eyes were drawn to him now. Everyone gained wide eyes when his body started going through a change. First he shot up in height from his short four. Nine to a staggering seven. Three feet tall. His body then started to gain muscle, and his hands gained thick claws. His human ears vanished and were replaced by large wolf ears. His clear blue eyes turned into glowing gold orbs. His face changed to resemble a wolf's head. His hair turned silver and it quickly spread across his body. From his rear a thick bushy silver wolf tail appeared. Finally he dropped down to all fours. The now wolf Naruto was standing there snarling at Gato. Gato now afraid said first person to kill that thing gets to go first with the blonde girl. The thugs hearing this cheered and charged forward. 
Wolf Naruto seeing this, let loose a sonic howl that could be heard around the elemental nations. He then blurred forward, and the next thing anyone knew, the thugs were being ripped apart, literally. One thug landed in front of Kakashi, missing the lower half of his body, with wide open dead eyes. Ino, Sakura, Shikamaru, Chaoji, and Tazuna had to turn away as the scene was too gruesome for their weak stomachs. Asuma and Kakashi on the other hand watched the entire thing with mild fascination. Pretty soon the still wolf Naruto was now slowly walking towards the petrified Gato, his silver fur coated in the blood of his enemies. Gato falling on his ass was trembling in pure fear as the wolf had literally tore through over 1,000 hired thugs and it was now stalking its way towards him. He then felt air being blown on him and something wet drop on his head. He looking up blanched as the wolf was now hovering right over him, its mouth agape revealing rows upon rows of sharp deadly teeth, already coated in the blood of its victims. Beto then looked into the eyes of the wolf and felt utter dread fill his soul, as the golden orbs were showing his death many different ways. Before he could even make a plea for his life, the jaws snapped down on his head, and with a loud crunch Gato was dead. The wolf then consumed Gato's entire body and then started to eat the rest of the thugs. This is what made Asuma and Kakashi turn away. After the sound of bones being crunched and the pained moans of the one still somewhat alive died down, everyone turned back around and instantly sweat dropped, spotting Naruto standing there once again human but sleeping while standing up. It was at this moment that the villagers arrived ready to fight. Kakashi shaking his head walked over to Naruto and picked the boy up, noticing that his hair was now silver, with some patches of red mixed in along with blonde. Parrying Naruto, he thought Kanoha's blood wolf has a nice catch to it. I wonder if whoever was watching is going to give Naruto that name. He then noticed that Asuma was carrying the body of Hei, while Shikamaru and Chaoji with one arm slung around him were carrying Sasuke. He noticed that Sakura was trying to boss the two boys around. He was wondering where Ino was until he spotted her behind him with a very worried look in her eyes as she looked at Naruto. This made him smile as Naruto had gained her attention. Naruto would wake two days later feeling ten times better than he had ever felt. He sitting up yawned, revealing his mouth full of pearly white teeth and larger canine teeth. He scratching the side of his face, wondered why he was so full. Shrugging he then looked at his right hand and gained wide eyes spotting his birthmark on display. It had changed though, as before it was just a small mark at the corner of his hand. Now it was a lark black lightning shaped mark starting at the tip of his pointer finger and encircling his entire right hand. He could even seen words inside of his birthmark. He narrowing his eyes could make out the words calm the storm. Shaking his head, he looked at his other hand and nearly choked as he had a full-on bloody moon on his left hand. It took up the entire back of his hand. The moon was a plum purple, and Naruto swore he could see stars around it. Shaking his head he read the words in it also, and could barely make out the words Heavenly Wolf of the All Lunar Fang Clan. Shaking his head, he then heard the sound of someone approaching the door. Turning his head he watched as the door opened, and in came Ino carrying a tray of downright drool-worthy smelling food. Ino not noticing that he was awake said stupid forehead trying to keep the food tsunami san made for Nerukun. She's lucky Asuma sensei told me not to put her into a state of mental shutdown. She shaking her head smiled and said oh well it's time to feed my knight in shining armor. She then blinked spotting Naruto's gold and sapphire orbs staring at her with slight interest. Her face then lit up like a Christmas tree as she stuttered out and then Naruto-kun you're awake now. Naruto smiling nodded and said that I am Ino. His eyes then moving to the food asked is all of that for me? Ino still with a blush on her face nodded and said yeah Tsunami-san made this for you and she's been doing so since we got back from the bridge. I've been feeding you every meal that she fixes. Naruto smiling said thank you very much Ino-chan, I don't mind if you feed me now if you want to. Ino nodding very quickly started to feed Naruto the food, never noticing the smirking Susan looking through the window. After he was finished being feed, Naruto stood up and stretched, never noticing that he gained lots of muscle and was now shirtless. Ino noticed though and was instantly reduced to a drooling and blushing mess. Naruto finishing his stretching blinked spotting Ino's state. Shrugging he walked out of the room and into the nearest bathroom. He blinking spotting himself in the mirror. He now had long silver hair that looked to have been styled and with splashes of red and blonde. His right eyes was golden like his wolf form while his left eye was the same blue it always was. He could see that he finally had the muscles he worked so hard for. Hell he could see that his scars were gone. Even his whisker marks were gone. What replaced them was the black shading under each eye. He opening his mouth blinked spotting his now much larger teeth. Hell he was sure his canine teeth could be considered fangs now. Shaking his head, used a bathroom noticing that his Johnson was bigger. Washing his hands he figured it was because of his transformation. Walking out of the bathroom, he walked back into the room and put on the shirt the still crimson Eno handed to him. 
Once having a shirt on, he made Eno wait outside so he could change pants. Opening the door, he walked out in his new attire. He had on a black shirt that was tight against his muscles and a pair of black pants that went well with his shirt. Eno still blushing turned around and lead Naruto down the stairs. Naruto reaching the bottom of the stairs rolled his eyes spotting Sakura pestering Kakashi to give Sasuke something. He then spotted said Emo brooding by the window. Shaking his head he coughed into his hands, alerting the house of his presence. The ignoring the glare from Sakura and the grunt from Sasuke smiled at everyone else and asked so how is everyone doing. He was surprised when Inari glomped him and said big brother Naruto, you're finally awake. Naruto smiling said of course I'm awake Inari. I'm the hero after all. He then heard Tazuna laugh and said I have to agree with the brat here. He is the hero. Tsunami shaking her head said welcome back to the realm of consciousness Naruto-kun. Kakashi eye smiling tossed him a scroll and said there you go spoils of battle. Shikamaru just mumbled something about troublesome people. Chaoji smiled and handed him a bag of chips. Asuma smiling nodded at him. He then asked so is the bridge finished. Azuna smiling brightly said oh yeah the bridge is finished brat and it's even been named. Naruto smiling asked really what you name it. Inari smiling said the great Naruto bridge. Naruto blinked at this and smiled brightly and said well damn already got a bridge named after me. Kakashi eye smiling again said well then since you're awake let's get back to the village before the Hokage sends any more backup. Naruto nodding said sure sensei, let's get back to the village so I can get some Raymond and take the hat from the old man. Asuma started laughing at this knowing good and well what Naruto was talking about. The two teams after saying goodbye the villagers of Wave were making their way back to Konoha, Naruto informing Ino that she should stop her silly diet and eat more because anything she eats will just be sweated off during training, which he was also telling her she should take more seriously. Shikamaru was still mumbling about troublesome people. Chaoji was happily munching on his chips. Asuma was smoking and smiling at what Naruto was telling Ino. Sakura was trying to get Sasuke to agree to a date with her. Sasuke was ignoring her. Kakashi was reading his book ignoring everything else in the world. Ino herself was listening to Naruto's every word, paying close attention to his eyes. She couldn't help but get lost in his different colored eyes. They were about halfway to the village when Naruto's senses started going wild. He wondering why still then let out a low growl. Ino spotting this got worried and wondered why he had did that until two groups of Anbu appeared in front of the group. The leader of the two groups a woman with purple hair bowed and said Namika's sama. Naruto blinked hearing this and asked who are you talking to? The woman still bowed down said I speak to you Namika's sama. You are Prince Naruto Uzumaki Namika's heir of the Namika's and Uzumaki clan. Prince of not only the lost fallen whirlpool country, but of the very heavens itself. Lady Amaterasu informed the village of this two days after Team 10 left for wave. Lady Tsukiyomi commanded the civilian council and most of the village start making up for what they did to you or she was going to ensnare the entire village in an endless nightmare. Lady Susanu has threatened to bring down an eternal storm down on the village if we don't start apologizing for our mistakes. Naruto hearing this face palmed and said of course my troublesome family would do that. He then smirked and said guess I'm gonna have to remind the village just why it's a very bad idea to start to treating me like a prince. Bakashi recognizing the smirk on his face paled and asked, you aren't gonna do what I think you're gonna do are you? Naruto started to cackle for his response. Kakashi quickly put his book away and pulled out every ounce of money he had on him. Handing it to Naruto he asked is this enough to keep me safe from your wrath? Naruto with an insane gleam in his eyes said none will be safe. No amount of money will exempt you from my sights. He then turning to Ino, walked up to her, leaned forward like he was gonna kiss her, making Ino close her eyes with a blush on her face. Naruto then switched places with Sakura and pushed the pink-haired girl forward, causing the two girls to kiss. He then cackling with glee, said that's Ino-chan down. He then vanished and Sasuke screamed very loudly. The reason why, well a tree branch was giving him a atomic wedgie. Naruto appearing on the branch cackled and said team is down. Bakashi with wide eyes took off running heading towards the village hidden in the leaves. Asuma quickly realizing what Kakashi had been so terrified of, started running as fast as he could towards the village, intent on getting to the nearest bomb shelter and camping out for the next few days. Chaoji and Shikamaru figured it out seconds later, yet it was too late for them. Shikamaru was soon strung up by his feet, spray painted pink, yellow and blue, covered in chocolate, surrounded by the nagging voice of his mother. Chaoji was put in a deep hole and stripped of all his food and pills. He also had seals placed on him blocking his access to his chakra. Naruto appearing again started to cackle with insane glee as he said, Here I come Kanoha the prank king from hell will make you pray to Kami to save you. The cat masked Anbu hearing this quickly vanished in a leaf shushin, not wanting to be caught in one of his pranks. She knew her comrades had done the same. 
Saratobi Harrison inside of the village in the Hokage Tower suddenly shivered as if some great evil had just been unleashed on the village. He quickly tried coming up with a source for this evil and was drawing up blanks until he looked down at a sheet of paper marked important by the council. He looking it over turned as white as snow because it was the paperwork to make one Yuzumaki Naruto join the Kra and naming him a prince. Saratobi standing up quickly flared his chakra and shouted for all of the village to hear run and hide fools. The prank king from hell has been unleashed and this time he cannot be bribed. I repeat the prank king is back with a fury. None are safe. He wasn't surprised when the entire village broke out in a mass panic as Naruto's pranks were both famous yet infamous. Before he was easily bribed not to prank someone but with this announcement all hell was breaking loose. He then heard a scream in this distance. It was the sound of new. Not my itcha, you monster how could you burn every single book. Oh wait there's one left. He knew this was Kakashi and was praying the man wasn't stupid enough to open the book. Sadly he was wrong when Kakashi screamed ahh my eyes. It burns. The horror the horror. He then assume a scream out not my cigarettes. A loud explosion could then be heard. He turning around closed the door and put a seal on it to keep people out and him in. He then took an extra precaution by hiding in the hookage vault. He pulling out his own copy of Itcha, said I only hope that this doesn't last long. Five days later and Naruto could be seen sitting on top of one of the training posts at training ground 7 picking his teeth. He was of course the first one to the training ground as the others were most likely still trying to recover from his pranks. Hell he was pretty sure the entire village was still trying to recover from his five day prank spree. He had gotten everyone in the village at least twice. Sakura he had pranked her 20 times the last one making her his pranks on Ino were harmless as the first time he had made her kiss Sakura. The second and last time he had made her play ninja with Konohimaru all day. Kakashi he had pranked 15 times, the last one forcing the man to witness the horrible sunset jinjutsu. He had also gone easy on AM and Tuchi. He had made AM eat a bowl of spicy ramen and made her admit to still having a teddy bear. Tuchi he had made the man wear a yellow bikini and tinted his teeth green. Iruka he had basically made admit being a pervert twice around multiple powerful Kinoichi. Don't get him wrong though he didn't spend all of the last five days pranking people, no he had worked on his bloodlines and transforming into his wolf form. So far he could do a wolf form for the main five elements, Shinranton, Mokuten, Supernova and Maiten, he had also mastered all of the jutsu Kakashi had given him to the point that he didn't need to use any hand signs. He had also taken to using Zabuza's sword as his own, and right now he was both wearing weights and gravity seals to help him get stronger. He had said sword on his back with gravity seals on it to make it heavier, along with some original Yuzumaki seals and few seals he created of his own. Like one seal that allowed him to summon the sword no matter how far apart they be. Another had amplified the fact that the sword was somewhat alive. All he had to do now was place a soul inside of it and see how it would react. Of course he had a seal for that too. His favorite seal though was the one that allowed him to harness the very power of the moon through the blade and attack with it. Naruto was about to yawn when Sakura arrived with her hair still having faint traces of dark green paint in it. From the look of her eyes she was very upset. His eyes moving to the arriving Sasuke gained a hint of glee, spotting that Sasuke's hair was still dyed bright pink and looked like it wasn't coming out. Kakashi then appeared once again reading his porn. Kakashi spotting the sword on Naruto's back eye smiled and asked, you're gonna use it? Naruto hopping down from the training post smiled and said yeah, it and three others. Kakashi hearing this blinked and asked four swords, seems ambitious. Naruto gaining a deadpan look, said says the man boasting about having copied over a thousand jutsu. Kakashi holding up his hand said good point. He then I smiling said alright team, after our mission I decided to seriously start training you three. If it weren't for Naruto, the late Hayate and Team 10, we could all be dead or worse in Sakura's case. He then putting away his book said alright get ready because here it comes. He then created two clones of himself and sent the other two with Sasuke and Sakura. The real Kakashi lifted up his headband to reveal his Sharingan. He pulling out a single kunai dropped into a ready stance and said alright Naruto, let's see how good you've gotten with your bloodlines and that sword. Naruto putting his hand on the handle of said sword closed his eyes and said, don't hold back sensei. He then drew the sword and vanished. Kakashi barely able to keep up with Naruto, blocked a heavy swing from Naruto. He grunting in effort said, you're gotten really good with that sword Naruto, you even increased your speed. He then leaping backwards, rushed through hand signs and cried out fire style, great fireball jutsu. Naruto spotting the fireball coming swung the sword and said kinjutsu, backlash wave. Kakashi's eyes widened when his fireball was sent soaring back at him with even more power. He replacing himself with a log, dashed towards Naruto with two kunai. Naruto spotting this, flipped his sword over and held in front of him. 
Closing his eyes he said Tsuki Jinjutsu, Lunar Cycle. The Kashi looking at the blade was soon transported to a desolate training field at night. He looking around spotted something in the sky. Looking up his eyes wide and spotting ten purple moons shining in the night sky. He then felt something nick his arm. Using the power of his Sharingan to dispel the illusion, Blink spotting the small slash on his arm. Jumping back he started looking for Naruto. His eyes widened when Naruto appeared beside him in mid-swing. Replacing himself quickly with a log. He flinched when the log was shredded. Going through hand signs cried out lightning style, lightning hound jutsu. Naruto spotting the hound blinked and cried out true storm style, storm dragon jutsu. Bakashi felt his eyes widen when from the very air a dragon made of the elements of the storm appeared and destroyed not only his lightning hound, but a good portion of the training ground. Bakashi then cursed when he heard Naruto cry out Mokuten, hand of nature jutsu. He jumping into the air gasped spotting a fully formed wooden hand burst from the ground where he had been standing. He was even more shocked when the hand gained flowers and vines. He then ducked when Naruto's new sword flew over his head. Hearing something full behind him, he turned his head and sweat dropped, spotting a few trees on the ground from the sword that was lodged into the ground. He turning back lifted his hand just in time to catch a punch from Naruto. Kakashi grunted in effort feeling the power and weight in Naruto's punch. He and Naruto then engaged in a deadly tojutsu battle that he was barely winning. Naruto then back flipping away from him landed on his feet and lifted his right hand. Kakashi felt his eyes widen when Kubakirabacho appeared in Naruto's right hand. Spotting the glowing seals on the sword he cursed at the fact that Naruto was smart enough to do something like that. He blinked though when Naruto tossed it into the air. Naruto clapping his hands together closed his eyes and started speaking in a language Kakashi had never heard before. Naruto then opened his eyes and Kakashi gasped, spotting what looked like the Sharingan in his eyes. He cursed even louder when Naruto wolfed out on him. Naruto's fur was a dark green with light brown streaks around his muzzle. Naruto then shocked him by catching the Kubakirabancho in his hand. He felt the blood drain from his face when the sword bulked up and the edge became serrated. Naruto smirking then dashed forward and Kakashi cursed more when a deep slash appeared on his arm. Jumping into the air he cried out earth style, mud bullet jutsu. Naruto spotting the mud bullet sailing towards him growled and roared out Mokuten, lock of nature's hair. Kakashi felt his eyes widen when a thick group of vines and flowers appeared and blocked his attack. Naruto dropping down to all fours, dashed forward until he was directly underneath Kakashi. He then standing up tossed his sword up and howled out Mokuten, Yoko death plant. Bakashi dodging the sword replaced himself with the nearest log and shit himself, spotting the monstrous plant that it appeared where he had been. The plant was purple and white, was the size of an oak tree, and had large glistening teeth. Hell it even had baleful golden eyes. Naruto allowing Kubarikabancho to fall into the ground, shifted from Mokuten wolf to his true storm release wolf form. This made his fur change from dark green to a stormy gray. It also started to look slight wet, yet winded. Naruto locking his eyes on Kakashi howled out true storm release, Susanoo's wrath. Kakashi felt his eyes widen even more when a gigantic storm spread out over the village hidden in the leaves and Naruto vanished. He closing his eyes tried to find Naruto's outrageous chakra reserves. This didn't work as it was like Naruto had vanished without a trace. His chakra was nowhere to be found. Kakashi was then forced to double over in pain when a heavy punch was lodged into his gut. He was then lifted into the air when a kick to his chin forced him up. He then just managed to block a punch to his right side, but then had to duck to keep himself from being eaten by the plant Naruto had created earlier. A flash of lightning and Naruto became visible in front of him, crouched in a low stance, his wolf eyes locked on Kakashi's form. Honestly this made him look like a hungry wolf ready to strike. Naruto then whispered to Jutsu, Storm Wolf's Berserker Barrage. Kakashi hearing this instantly put his all into dodging or blocking the next attacks. Good thing he had, because Naruto would be trying to slash off his right arm one second, the next he would be trying to server his corroded artery. Kakashi even had to jump to dodge a few of Naruto's attacks. Finally it became too much for him when he lost the feeling in his right arm. He then called for the spar to end. The storm vanished and Naruto was once again human, his tongue hanging out of his mouth as he panted from exhaustion. Kakashi could see the many spots that he had managed to hit on Naruto, including the slightly broken right hand. Bakashi I smiling said alright since I just had a spar with all three of you, I can honestly say Naruto is at Jonin level or Sanin level. Sasuke is low Chunin level, and Sakura is low Genin level. This means that if I am knocked out or killed, Naruto is to take over the role of leader and do his very best to make it out of the situation alive. He was about to say more when Sasuke in pure anger said, there's no way the dope is more powerful than me. I am an Ichiha lady as a loser. Sakura quickly agreed as she said, yes Sasuke-kun is the one at Jonin level or Sanin level, and the Baka is at low Genin level. I'm way better than him. 
Naruto hearing this rolled his eyes and said Sakura, Konohamaru and his little gang have more skill and power than you in their pinky fingers. I myself release more power than you yawning. Sakura hearing this turned brick red and ran towards Naruto to teach him a lesson, never noticing the smirk on Naruto's face. Sakura was an inch from him when Naruto cried out Tsuki no Okami Jinjutsu, know your role Jutsu. Lunar Wolf Illusion, know your role Jutsu. Sakura stopped and her eyes glazed over. Five minutes later she gained a massive blush, blood dripped from her nose, and she flew back from a nosebleed, a massive perverted grin on her face. She crashing into Sasuke giggled why yes Sasuke-kun I will do that with you. Yes I'm your little slut. Bakashi hearing this wet dropped and asked do I even wanna know what that Jinjutsu did to her. Naruto chuckling said no, you don't sensei. Anyway I'm off to replenish my energy. Maybe a Raymon run, and while I'm there might as well visit my favorite Raymon waitress. He then walked off, ignoring the even bigger sweat drop on Kakashi's head. Naruto could later be found walking aimlessly around the village, as he wasn't allowed into the Raymond stand for some reason. So here he was hungry as hell, but couldn't eat his favorite meal. Sighing he was about to give in and cook himself a meal at his new home, when his ears picked up the sound of something at the gate. He walking over to the gate, gained wide eyes spotting the purple-haired Anbu struggling to crawl through the gate, with cold dead eyes. His instincts picking up, he rushed towards her and lifted her into his arms. He then rushed towards the hospital. Entering there he quickly got her some medical attention and sat down in the waiting room. An hour later he was dosing off when he was shaken awake. Opening his eyes he blinked spotting Kurenai-sensei, along with Anko and Hana standing in front of him. He yawning asked what's up. Anko asked are you the one who rushed our friend here? Naruto standing up stretched even more not noticing how the eyes of all three females traced his every movement. He then said yeah I found her at the gates all injured and rushed her here. He blinked when he was hugged by all three women as they said thank you. Naruto blinking asked what for. Hana shaking her head said, you saved her life. If it weren't for you she'd be dead right now. Naruto hearing this gained wide eyes. He was about to ask a question when he heard a voice he was very familiar with say, so I was right after all. She is trying to kill herself with all of these S-class missions. Naruto turning his head blinked spotting the Hokage and asked old man, why would she be trying to kill herself? Siratobi sighing said because her fiancé was killed on that mission you and Team 10 were on. Naruto hearing this blinked and was confused at first, until his eyes widened as he whispered out hey san Siratobi nodding said hi. The two of them were very much in love and had planned on wedding in a month. Naruto hearing this scowled and said another life affected by that damn mission. This time negatively. Naruto shaking his head turned to Siratobi with serious eyes and asked which room is she in as I plan on fixing this now. Siratobi quirking an eyebrow said room 309. Naruto nodding started walking towards her room. Once at the door he pushed it open and felt his eyes soften, spotting her quietly sobbing mumbling why hey eight. Why? Naruto pulling out Kubarika Bancho said stop your crying fair maiden. I will reunite you and your lover for a solid day. Her eyes widened as she looked up at him. He slamming his blade into the floor turned it, wolfed out, unleashed a lot of chakra, and howled out I use Amaki Naruto hereby call in a favor from Shinigami. Bring forth hey Jeko. My body shall act as the anchor for his soul. I use Amaki Naruto son of the goddess of the storms, nephew of the goddess of the sun and the moon, hereby grant hey Jeko one day in my body, as I myself shall take on the form of a wolf. Use this day to give your lover peace of mind. He then pouring even more chakra out of his body howled even louder. This howl was so loud that all of Konoha could hear the howl. It was so loud it pierced the heavens. Yuago's eyes widened spotting Naruto's body starting to glow. Her jaw nearly scraped the floor when the astral form of Hade appeared and sunk into Naruto's body. The blinding light occurred in the room, and when it was gone, there was a silver wolf about the size of Naruto sitting down beside Naruto's body, which now had its eyes closed. When the eyes opened, Yuago gasped spotting the eyes of her lover. Hei trembling touched his face and said this. How impossible. The wolf then yawned attracting the attention of both people. It then laying down closed its eyes and said I really need to learn the definitive of that word. Otherwise I'll just keep doing impossible things. The wolf yawning again said then again I'm Naruto motherfucking Yuzumaki the prince of the very heavens. Now you two have one day to do what needs to be done. After that Shinigami-chan is coming back for your soul hey and I really don't feel like fighting her for your soul, especially since it's the Ichiha's fault you died. He then opening one of his eyes, showed a big blue eye as he asked do the both of you understand me? Both people nodded. Naruto hearing this closed his eye and said good because I'm pooped. I'm going to sleep for the next day. Don't plan on moving an inch, so do me a favor and get me something to eat and bring it in front of this form. No hospital food thank you very much. 
both people blinked when he was soon slumbering peacefully right where he door was then kicked down revealing Saratobi, Yuago's friends and a slew of other shinobi, all ready to do battle. Saratobi spotting the wolf, Naruto Heiade and Yuago looked to her and said explain. Yuago nodding explained to Saratobi what happened. Saratobi hearing this face palmed and said that's it I'm buying that boy a dictionary and making him look up the word impossible. I mean come on summoning a soul back from the dead just so that a couple could find closure, becoming the youngest person to ever be put in the bingo book and being the prince of the heavens. He then cried and said I'm getting too old for this shit. The wolf Naruto snorting said damn right you are. Now hand over the hat, the Raymond and Kurenai Haim, and nobody has to get hurt you old goat. Everyone turned to look at him, not believing what he had just said, until they all realized that he was dreaming. Naruto then scratching his muzzle with one of his paws, said of course I'm rescuing you Kurenai Haim after all, it's the Hokage's job to keep his people safe. That's doubly true when it comes to his uber sexy assistant who also happens to be his wife. He then giggled again and went back to snoring. Saratobi and Hayate had deep blushes on their faces and some blood dripping from their noses. Kurenai was trying to push down the blush from her face at the fact that the Prince of the Heavens was dreaming of her like that. Anko was giggling at the blackmail material she was getting on the blonde brat who dared switch her dango with Pocky. Hana was forcing herself not to jump the wolf that was admitting the aura of the Alpha. Yuago just shook her head at this. A day later and Naruto was back in his body starving as no one had given him any food. He was then forced to attend a team training exercise along with do a few missions. Naruto was barely standing as he stumbled towards his home, ignoring the worried looks in everyone he passed face. He was nearly home when, his ears picked up Konohamaru saying, you'd better put me down before my awesome big brother comes and kicks your ass. The hearing a voice he didn't recognize snort and say brat your big brother is probably some wannab looser who pretends to be a shinobi. His eyebrow started to twitch at this, but he heard Mogi say no way boss Khan is a prince and trains super hard to be the best. The voice from before then said a prince a. So he's a spoiled brat who thinks the world owes him everything. I bet he doesn't even know what a kunai looks like. Naruto didn't know who this guy was, but he was really starting to piss him off. Yudin then said boss is not a spoiled brat and he does so know what a kunai looks like. Boss has this awesome sword that he carried around always. The voice then crossed the line when he said so your boss is gay then. If he carries around his sword all the time, that mean he always has his hand on his Johnson and is always wanking off. Naruto turning around shifted into his supernova werewolf form and ran towards the location. When he was nearly there, he jumped into the air, let loose a bone-chilling howl, and swung down Kubarikabancho like the hammer of Thor. Landing he nearly cleaved a boy dressed in a black cat suit with something in bandages on his back. Naruto turning around started to growl very loudly at the boy who he could tell was shitting his pants. Naruto pointing the tip of his blade at the boy said, you have five seconds to get your makeup wearing cat suit dressing, puppet fucking ass out of my face, before I rip you to pieces and have you for lunch. The boy hearing this quickly got up and ran as far as he could, leaving behind his shell-shocked blonde sister and the smirking academy students. Naruto turning to the tree growled out, that goes for you to Tanuki. I don't give a damn about what you hold in you because nine trumps won every day. Now get. The murderer's princess and the tree vanished very quickly with visible fear. Naruto then turning to the blonde was about to tell her to get when his eyes actually got a good look at her. He quickly lost his wolf form, shook his head clear, and then smiled what he hoped was a dazzling smile at the girl. He walking over to her gently grabbed her hand and kissed the back of it. He then looking her in the eyes, said may I have the pleasure of learning the name of such a lovely young lady. The girl with a red face turned her head and said Sabaku Tamari. The hearing this, smiled more and said Desert Rose, what a fitting name for such a beautiful flower. Tamari was now blushing very hard. Naruto then smiling more said I assume you are here for the Chunin exams that Kanoha is hosting this year. Tamari could only blush as Naruto still hadn't let go of her hand. He smiling let go of her hand and said I hope to see you there my lovely Desert Rose. He then turning to the three academy students scowled and said you three get back to class. All three saluting him ran back to class. Suddenly Naruto's hunger hit him full force. He started to wobble where he stood, drawing the attention of everyone watching including the Jonin sensei, who had been watching from the Hokage's office. Naruto steadying himself said stupid hunger. I need to get home before I call a of hunger. He then looking up at the sky whistled. A loud screech could be heard as a large white bird appeared. Naruto jumping on its back said home Karara. The bird screeched and Naruto was soon riding home on his pet from his aunt. In the Hokage's office Saratobi sweat dropped and asked did anyone remember to actually feed him something yesterday. Karini sweat dropped and looked towards the window whistling an innocent tune. Anko gained the most innocent look on her face, despite everyone knowing that it was anything but. 
Uago hidden in the shadows started feeling really guilty as Naruto had allowed Hei to use his body so she could get closure and she didn't even feed him. Bakashi flipping a page in his book said that would explain why he trapped Sasuke in his worst nightmare with a Jinjutsu and beat Sakura black and blue when I called them for team training today. Saratobi flinched hearing this and asked are the both of them alright? Bakashi shrugging said Kakashi looks at Naruto with fear now and Sakura refused to even go near him, but what do I know? Everyone sweat dropped hearing this and all thought lazy bastard. Two days later and Naruto was walking towards the academy to take the Chunin exams. In front of his face was a scroll about weapon forging. He was reading over the part about sword making. He reaching the academy without noticing walked inside, a fearful Sakura and angry Sasuke right behind him. He ignoring the illusion on the second floor he headed up the stairs and passed right by Kakashi. Once inside of the main room he blinked feeling a decent amount of killing intent directed at him. Rolling his eyes he unleashed his own killing intent that made most of the room whimper in fear. He was then glomped by Eno who was trying to nuzzle his face and kiss him at the same time. Smiling he put his scroll up and started to nibble on Eno's earlobe, gaining both a loud moan from Eno and a heavy blush from the girl. He then placing his hands on her still growing rump, pulled her closer to his body and moved his mouth from her ear to her neck and started to nibble and suck on it. Eno moaning even louder, put her hand on the back of his head while tilting her head to the right. Neither one of them noticed the fact that the entire room was blushing and Hinata was glaring at Eno with daggers for eyes. Tamari was also glaring at Eno for taking the hunk she had been hit on two days ago. Chikamaru with a blush on his face said troublesome blonde and silver it. Chaji pulling Naruto off of Eno said sorry Naruto I don't mean to cock block but I don't think you should be necking with Eno in front of all of these people. Naruto was about to growl at Chaji but stopped himself and gave everyone around him a hard look. Shaking his head he said, that's your one free pass Chaoji, next time you lose your arm. Eno hearing this bowed it and said you big dummy. I was so close to having Naruto kun and you go and ruin it. Naruto smirking said don't worry Eno chan, we'll have our day in the sun soon. Eno hearing this cheered in happiness, but instantly stopped and sent a potent glare at Sakura. S. The marching up to the still somewhat green haired girl said now listen here forehead. I don't care what you do with Sasuke, but you'd better keep your filthy unworthy hands off of my Naruto kun. Sakura hearing this instantly snapped out of her fear and glared at Ino. She then growled out watch at Ino pig. He's on my team and who knows I might just let him take me right here and now. Ino growling said as if forehead. You're as flat as a cardboard box and as loud as a banshee. I on the other hand have C-cup breast and we can already tell he likes my ass, plus I've been taking my training seriously ever since we got back from that mission. She then flipping her hair back said, I need to be in my best shape if I'm going to be the alpha of his harem. She then huffed. Sakura scowling said you're not even going to be in his harem piggy. In fact there will be no harem because once he's had a taste of me, he'll become addicted to me and I'll be pleasing him from then on. Both girls then started to fight over Naruto who was ignoring said argument in favor of once again reading his scroll. He sensing someone coming growled very loudly alerting the entire room. Naruto moving the scroll down growled at a silver haired genin with black eyes and black rimmed glass framing his face. The boy holding up his hand said easy there comrade. Naruto growling louder said I don't know who you are and I don't care. Get the hell on before I turn you into kibble for Akimaru. He then smirking savagely said trust me I can and will do it. The boy sweating slowly turned around and walked away. Once he was gone, Naruto went back to reading his scroll but blinked when he felt Akimaru sit down on his foot. Looking down at the dog, he could see in the eyes of Akimaru that he was the alpha and was his master. Naruto smiling at this bent down and let the small dog climb on top of his head. Going back to reading his scroll and ignoring the shouts from Kiba, he feeling chakra signatures approaching, slid next to Ino, wrapped an arm around her and started to growl. He stopped growling though when the proctors for the first exam appeared. The man explaining the exam told them to start. Naruto who was seated beside Tamari and some random Kanohe genin, had already figured out the exam and had Akimaru getting the answers for Kiba. Naruto simply cast an illusion to make it look like he had went to sleep. Really he had just copied the answers from the answer sheet in the man's jacket. That took him all of 5 seconds, so now he was messing with Tamari, as he nibbled on her neck, blew hot air into her ears, of placed gentle kisses down her neck. He could tell he was getting the reaction he wanted from her, as she would moan quietly or tense up. She was also biting her lip and rubbing her thighs together. Naruto then deciding to go further, actually bit her neck and sucked on it, giving her a visible hickey. He also started to gently massage her back. This caused her to actually moan out loud. He sitting back in his seat after this, let his jinjutsu fade away and smirked at the curious eyes of the proctor. He then leaning back in his seat let the exam go back to normal, occasionally scratching Akimaru's head. 
Soon Ibiki ended the exam and tried to bluff everyone away. Naruto noticing Sakura's hand starting to rise was about to growl at her when Ino said alright you scar-faced freak. Enough with the mind games. Let's get on with the 10th question. Ibiki scowling was about to say something when Naruto said you heard the lady scar face. Get this show over with. Ibiki now with a twitching eyebrow told them the truth just in time for Midarashi Anko to burst into the room with a silly pose that made her large breast jiggle. Naruto's eyes were temporarily drawn to said orbs before he snapped his eyes back to her face just as she told them to follow her. He smirking let something drop the ground. Seconds later it went off revealing itself to be a smoke bomb paint bomb smoke filled the room and coughing could be heard that was followed by a very loud moan, a scream, a few barks, and another moan. When the smoke cleared Ibiki was now pissed because not only was he completely red but his eyes burned, his skin was itchy, and he was pretty sure he had makeup on his face. The looking around instantly started laughing because the Ichiha now had face paint on his face that made it look like a duck, he also had little rubber duck feet glued to his hair. The Haruno had pink monkey ears glued to her head, along with pink fur and a pink monkey tail. She had a red collar around her neck that was linked to chain that was in the Inuzuka's hand. Said boy was bright red, his face being white, with a big red clown nose on his face. He was also wearing big red clown shoes. His gut then burst spotting the Hyuga boy looking like a very ugly girl, with oranges shoved into his shirt to give him the appearance of breast. He did notice that the blonde from Suna was clean and blushing bright red. Ino herself was giggling in glee, as she now had a visible hickey on her neck and she hadn't been pranked by Naruto. Naruto sitting at the gates of training ground 44 was picking his teeth as he and Anko waited for the rest of the genin. Minutes later the genin arrived and he smirked spotting the effects of his prank. Sakura was blushing and glaring at Kiba. Kiba still had the chain in his hand as it was super glued and the wind of music box he had wasn't helping his situation. Sasuke was glaring at him with pure hate in his eyes, he still looking like a duck had grown a second body and walking around on that. Niji was glaring at him with hate, as the boy now looked like the ugliest girl anyone could ever have the misfortune of seeing. Ino then appeared and glomped him, nuzzling her face into his neck. He spotting the hickey he had given her smirked and started to suck on said hickey. This caused Ino to moan loudly into his neck and once again for blushes to spread throughout the genin. Once again Ino was being glared at by Hinata and Tamari, who was trying and failing to hide her hickey. Anko on the other hand was laughing at the balls of the two to do what they're doing in front of so many people. Naruto stopping his attack on Ino's neck said Ino-chan, you really need to stop glumping me in public or at least while we're about to do a test. Ino removing her face from Naruto's neck pouted and said, but if I don't let the bitches know that you're mine, then they'll be all over you like white on rice. Especially forehead over there. She then pointed to Sakura the howler monkey. Said girl was beating up Kiba for accidentally pulling on her leash. Ino spotting the sweat dropped and said never mind. It seems as dog breath is destined to be hers. Naruto giggling said poor Kiba, his ears will never be the same again. At this Ino started to laugh. She then said she's gonna burst his eardrums and make him wish he was dead after their first time together. Naruto now laughing loudly ignoring all of the eyes on them said he's gonna bring great shame upon his clan for mating with another male and a howler monkey. Ino now holding on to Naruto to support herself said yeah his mom is gonna just walk away shaking her head, mumbling about her stupid son marrying a howler monkey who could make a cardboard box jealous at how flat it is. Naruto now holding his side said his sister is going to be freaked out when she starts to see brown haired howler monkey dogs walking around, either screeching at everything or trying to hump everything. By now everyone except for Kiba and Sakura were laughing. Even Sasuke the ever brooding emo avenger was quietly laughing. Anko holding onto her sides at how funny the jokes the two were spitting out, held up her hand to stop any more. Gaining her wits back she started explaining the rules of the second exam. Kiba then snorted and said I'm an alpha and this forest will be a piece of cake for me and my team. He then yelped when his cheek was slashed by one of Anko's kunai. She licking his cheek said, it's the loud ones like you that usually get killed fast in the exams. She then looking at Sakura said, that would be a very bad thing because then your howler monkey would be free to screech and try and seduce anyone. She walking back to the shack said alright enough games, come get your scrolls. Naruto getting the scroll for his team, put the heaven scroll in his pocket before creating a shadow clone of said scroll. Handing it to Sasuke he said keep the scroll safe team. Sasuke snorting said whatever dope. The now leash free Sakura trying to batter eyelashes at Naruto in a seductive manner said I can keep your scroll safe Naruto-kun. Naruto hearing this shivered in fear and nearly puked at how wrong that sounded. Shaking his head he said moving on, let's get to gate 20, so we can start this exam already. Sakura nodding followed Naruto trying to seduce him, while Sasuke was wondering what the hell was going on, as Sakura his most loyal fangirl was trying to seduce Naruto his now sworn enemy. 
be no glaring at Sakura from afar as Sakura tried to grab and pinch Naruto's ass growled and said, you're gonna pay for that forehead. Shikamaru hearing this sighed and mumbled out troublesome blondes. Chaoji munching on his chip said come Ino, let's get to our gate. Ino snorting followed Chaoji to their gate. Anata glaring at Ino said Kiba, Shino we are going after Team 10 and taking their scroll. Kiba rolling his eyes hearing the clear jealousy in her voice, said whatever you say Hinata. Shino simply pushed up his shades. Tamari glaring at Ino so wanted to go after Team 10 also, but knew that Gara was the leader of their team. Gara with a plain expression on his face said we kill whoever we come across. Kankura you will guide us. Tamari you will cover him. Both people nodded and followed him. In the forest Naruto was now yawning as Sasuke beat up an aim team who had tried to ambush Team 7. Sadly that was never going to work with Naruto's keen sense of smell. He already knew that this group had a heaven scroll, so he was letting Sasuke beat them down for no reason. He was also ignoring Sakura's pathetic attempts at seducing him. His mind was really on Ino and Raymond. The group after taking the extra heaven scroll moved along. They were passing by a river when Naruto's ears picked up the sound of wind heading their way. He pushing Chakra into his feet, stuck to the branch, but rolled his eyes when both Sasuke and Sakura were blown away. He spotting the source of the wind said Orochimaru of the San and I presume. Orochimaru peeling off the face of the girl he was wearing like a pair of shoes chuckled and said Naruto Kunar Kano has blood wolf. What a pleasure to meet you. Naruto blinked hearing this and asked I'm actually in the bingo book under that silly name. Orochimaru laughing said oh yes. You are a rank thread in the book. Naruto nodding asked besides chatting with me, why exactly are you here? Orochimaru chuckling more said I'm here to test you and Sasu kun Naruto hearing this asked test us for what? Orochimaru smirking said for my new body of course. Naruto hearing this shivered and said no thanks man I don't swing that way. Try team he'll bite. Orochimaru chuckling said very funny Naruto-kun. Enough games. He then rushed towards Naruto, who jumped backwards and pulled out Kubakirabacho. He rushing toward Orochimaru blinked when he was blocked by a sword from a snake's mouth. Orochimaru chuckling said I see you have gotten good with your new sword. Naruto having his eyes on the sword said the Kusanagi, damn this fight just got tough. Orochimaru hearing this laughed and said indeed it did Naruto-kun. The two then vanished and sound of clashing metal could be heard. Five minutes later Naruto appeared breathing heavily with a few cuts on him, Orochimaru was standing on a branch a smirk on his face a few small cuts on him. The snake then said you are very good Naruto-kun. Now it's time to show me some ninjutsu. Naruto hearing this decided to try some jinjutsu. Closing his eyes he lifted up his sword and cried out Tsuki Akami jinjutsu, midnight snack. Orochimaru blinked finding himself trapped in the body of a deer. He looking around blinked gaining wide eyes, spotting a pack of wolves around him drooling. He biting his lip dispelled the illusion and ducked a swing from Naruto's sword. He then punched Naruto in the stomach hard, launching him across the clearing. Naruto hitting a tree growled out Mokuten. Nature's Fury Jutsu. Orochimaru's eyes widened when from the ground a huge hand made of wood, vines, and flowers appeared and tried to slap him away. Naruto spotting this followed his attack up with Supernova Black Hole Sun. The snake's jaw nearly scraped the ground when a black bowl launched towards him. He moving felt his jaw actually touch the ground as a huge explosion occurred with flames so hot he could feel their heat from where he was standing. Naruto with one last jutsu in his mind cried out Shiranton, Cloud's Paradise. Orochimaru was then floored when a huge storm appeared in the clearing. He then barely replaced himself with a log in time to dodge a lightning strike. He ducked under huge wind blades. He wasn't prepared for Naruto's sword to come sailing at him. He managed to dodge though, letting the sword just barely nip him. He deciding to end this rush towards Naruto and extended his neck. Biting down on Naruto's neck he smirked spotting the curse seal of heaven appear on Naruto's neck. Naruto screaming glared at Orochimaru who chuckled and said, enjoy my little gift Naruto-kun. Orochimaru then vanished. Once his chakra signature vanished, the Naruto he had given his curse seal transformed into Naruto's sword. The sword that had sailed at him earlier transformed into a smirking Naruto. He walking over to his sword, blink spotting the new seal on it. Looking at it he scowled realizing that pedophile snake tried to stick a piece of his disgusting soul in him. He was really glad he had switched places with his sword or else he'd be fighting off the curse seal. Shaking his head he picked up his sword and was about to head towards his teammates when he noticed something glinting not too far from his direction. He following the gleam blink finding himself in a cave made of crystallized hellfire. He sniffing out the cave couldn't smell anything too dangerous so he slowly made his way into the cave. His eyes wide and spotting two swords much like the one on his back locked in eternal combat in front of him. He looking up could also see another pair of swords, these two looking like they were guarding something. He not knowing what to do closed his eyes and tried to feel if any of these swords were calling to him. His eyebrows started to twitch when all four swords started screaming for him to take them with him. 
he opening his eyes sighed and decided it was time for him to try his idea. Pushing energy through his body, he started picturing an extra pair of arms under the ones he had now. He winced feeling pain around his stomach area. Opening his eyes he couldn't believe that it worked, granted the arms were wolf-like in nature, but still he had four arms. Shaking his head, he walked over to the pair locked in battle, grabbed the Snow White one first. He instantly felt his chakra levels increase and could feel his Hyotin chakra getting crazy strong. He grabbing the sword that looked to be blood-colored, started sweating, feeling his supernova chakra levels, along with his Canton chakra levels skyrocket. He then looking down blinked spotting tiny pink and white crystals on his left arm. His other arm was now coated in a blazing orangish-red aura. He blinked hearing an angelic, melodic and female voice tell him that the first sword was named Soul Calibur or the Blessed Sword. He then heard a deep demonic voice tell him that the other sword was named Soul Edge. He shaking his head was wondering where to put both swords. Imagine his surprise when both swords transformed into wristbands of corresponding colors. He shaking his head walked over to the other swords and grabbed them with his wolf arms. He had to let out a loud howl as he felt both his Fuit and Charka levels get a major boost. He shaking his head looked down at the ends of the two swords and blinked spotting the red demon head on the red blade and the blue demon head on the blue blade. He then heard twin voices say that the name of these two swords were an eye and Rudra. He was then informed that the two swords can be fused to be easier to carry around. He fusing them blink spotting a sword slightly longer than his first one. Nodding he walked out of the cave and took a deep whiff of the forest. He finding Sasuke scent, rolled his eyes as the Achiha smelled like snakes and Sakura smelling like piss. Sighing he decided to sniff out Ino instead. His eyes narrowed smelling her with teammate. She also seemed terrified for some reason. He shifting into his full wolf form, ran towards her location. Ino was terrified as Hinata and her team had taken out Shikamaru and Chaoji, leaving just her. Since coming back from Wave she had been taking her training seriously, but even she couldn't defeat Hinata and her two teammates by herself. Hinata with a glare in her eyes said, you are to stay away from Naruto-kun he is mine. Ino hearing this felt her fear melt away as she snarled no, he's not. He's mine. Hinata sneering was about to strike Ino when in fear inducing howl ripped throughout the forest. Ino recognizing the howl though, started looking around for what she was sure is Naruto. She then heard Akamaru start whimpering. She turning to the dog, blink spotting him with his tail between his legs and laid out on his back. She looking at Kiba knew that dog boy was terrified as his eyes were wide and he was constantly scanning the surroundings. Shino himself was breathing very heavy, like he was trying desperately not to faint. She then looked at Hinata who was trembling like a little leaf, her Byakugan eyes looking directly above Ino. Ino looking up herself felt her heart leap out of its chest spotting Naruto in his wolf form, glaring at teammate with his rage-filled eyes. Naruto jumping down in front of Ino growled out leave now. All members of teammate didn't say a word, but took off running, not daring to further enrage the massive wolf in front of them. Naruto shifting back into his human form, turned to Ino and was about to ask if she was alright. Instead he found himself engaged in a major makeout session with the grateful Yamanaka heiress. When the kissing stopped, Ino drew back and whispered with lust clear in her voice, I don't want to wait anymore Naruto-kun. I need you now. I want you to claim me as your mate and make me the alpha of your future harem. Naruto closing his eyes said fine Ino Haim. He then carried her a little bit away from the clearing her team was still in. He slapping some seals down said there now no one should disturb us. He then placing her down wasn't prepared for her to glomp him and begin the makeout session again. The two of them getting back the clearing woke up Shikamaru and Chaoji. Naruto then left. Arriving in the clearing where his teammates was, he sweat dropped spotting Sakura basically raping the unconscious Asuke. He deciding not to make his presence known, climbed into the tree, transformed into his wolf form and took a nap. He would be woken up hours later from the sounds of a struggle. Opening one of his eyes he rolled his wolf eyes, spotting Sakura being beaten up by the sound genin. He hoping down from his perch, growled lowly, getting the reaction he wanted from the people in the clearing. His eyes narrowed when the girl of the sound team jumped and bruises could be seen. He walking over to her and ignoring the others checked her over. His growl then became a powerful snarl as he could tell that this poor girl was being abused by her teammates. He turning his eyes on them, could feel the fear crawling up their spines. This fear got bigger when he summoned Soul Edge and had his tail wrapped around it. He then letting loose one of his howls, made the entire forest tremble in fear. That fear doubled when a howl much like his could be heard coming from deep in the forest. Naruto then dashed forward and like a blur the two other members of the sound genin fell to the floor dead. He shaking his fur, he turned to the terrified girl. He walking over to her gently nuzzled his face with hers. Kin feeling this, calmed down greatly. Naruto feeling this, made the girl climb on his back. He looking at Sakura motioned for her to follow him with Sasuke. 
Sakura nodding, followed Naruto to the tower. Naruto entering the tower, threw out the two scrolls and ignored when Aruka appeared and explained the test. He then escorting the now sleeping peacefully kin to the Hokage's office in the tower, laid down gently on the floor and let her wake up herself. Kin spotting the Hokage and a few of the Jonin instantly felt fear creep up her spine. She was instantly calmed down as Naruto let out a snore from under her. She looking down smiled spotting the wolf that had rescued her from her terrible team. She hearing the Hokage ask her to explain did so, leaving nothing out. She felt fear fill her body hearing some people scream for her death. That fear vanished just as quick as it came because Naruto letting out a loud growl. Naruto standing to his feet glared at everyone with his eyes. He creating a clone, had Kin get on its back. Shifting into his human form, summoned both Soul Edge and Soul Calibur. He then looking at every person that had screamed for Kin's death and said shut your filthy mouths. Kin-chan is now under my protection. She is to be marked down as my vassal and any who dare threaten her will feel my full wrath. He then slamming Soul Calibur into the floor, ignored when blue crystals appeared all around him and said I will also have you burning by the very flames of the sun. He then looking one person dead in the eyes said so heed my words, before I am forced to skin you alive and dance on your bones. He then shifting back into his wolf form, allowed Kin to climb back on his back and made his way to the room. Saratobi sweat dropping could only say I need to find a replacement soon. I'm getting way too old for this shit and he fucking knows it. Naruto in a room curled up next to Ino, both of them in their wolf form, smirked and said you damn right I do you old man. Soon I will have the hat and things will never be the same. Ino snuggling into Naruto growled out hush Naruto koi. Their princess needs her sleep. Naruto sweat dropped hearing this and wondered if his clone was doing any better with Kin. Kin nuzzling into the Naruto clone's warm fur was like Naruto-sama's fur is nice and cozy. The clone sweat dropped hearing this and thought why does boss always attract the crazies. I mean Eno, this chick, the crazy proctor, and that hot Anbu. Ami why can't he pick someone normal like Kurunai or Hana? It then feeling Kin start drooling in its fur, cried mentally and said I hate you boss. My fur is going to ruin. Troublesome crazy women. Two days later and Aruka was scratching his head, spotting what he was sure was an Aruto clone in a chibi wolf form being cuddled to death by Kin. The reason he was scratching his head was the wolf had tears in its eyes and was begging him for him to help it. He could help the wolf and be out of favor from Naruto or let it suffer as payback for all those times Naruto got him beat up by Kinoichi for being a pervert. He sighing decided to spare the clone's life and said Kin-san please relinquish the clone before it dies. Kin blinking released the clone who appeared in front of Aruka and kissed his feet. Aruka ignoring the said Naruto dismiss this clone and report to the main room, I'm sure you'll be able to find your way there. I'll escort Kin-san there. Ino needs to be there also. The clone nodding vanished in a poof of smoke. Aruka ignoring this lead Kin to the main room ignoring how terrified the girl seemed, not that he blamed her as he had heard what some of the people had threatened her with. He reaching the main room, Link spotting the real Naruto there without a shirt, Ino hanging onto his left arm. Aruka noticed that something was different about Ino. Was her hair longer and did it just shine in the light? Shaking his head he focused his attention on Naruto who now had two wristbands and two swords on his back. He recognized the first one as the head cleaver, the second one he didn't recognize, but could see the kanji for Tempest on the hilt. Naruto walking forward gave Kin his arm and said calm down Kin-chan. I'm right here and I won't allow a single person to lay a finger on you. Kin hearing this instantly calmed down and latched onto the arm Ino wasn't hanging onto. Naruto smiled at this and lead his two girls down the stairs to join the rest of the genin, including Sasuke who he could tell had gotten an evil hickey of doom from Petamaru. His eyes moving to Saratobi who looked like he wanted to strangle someone, pretended to pay attention as the man droned on and on about the true purpose of the Chunin exams. Everyone thought he was going to lose his temper first, but they were wrong. Ino getting annoyed at Saratobi's speech growled and said old man if you don't get to the point Naruto-kun is gonna go on a pranking spree so bad that you'll never finish the paperwork that comes from it. All eyes moved to Naruto, who smirked and said you heard my heim, get to the point old man. Saratobi sweat dropping did get to the point and some random jonin appeared to start the prelims. Naruto walking back up the steps with a girl on either arm, leaned against the wall and watched the matches. The first match was Kiba vs Kankuro the boy from Suna. Kiba down on the floor had an arrogant smirk on his face as he said, this is great I get the loser who plays with his dolls and wear his sister's makeup. His comment got Ino to giggle, Kin to snicker and Naruto to laugh very loudly. Kankuro with an twitching eyebrow said I get to put the horny little doggy down. That's when Ino and Kin lost it and started laughing very loudly. Naruto shaking his head said that round goes to the marionette fucker. When Naruto said this everyone burst out laughing including Kiba who said Naruto in for the kill. Kankuro was now twitching completely. He turning his head glared at Naruto and said forget the doggy I want the fruit wolf boy. 
Naruto hearing this felt his eyes narrow as he said Akamaru rip him to pieces so commands Prince Akami, leader of the heavenly All Lunar Fang clan. Akamaru hearing this didn't bark but let loose a powerful howl that sent chills down everyone's spine. Kiba looking at his dog blinked when Akamaru turned into a large wolf with blood red fur. Kankuro spotting the wolf shit his pants. Naruto smirking manically said Kiba I give you the blessing of the All Lunar Fang clan. Unleash your inner wolf and show this fool why canines tend to run in packs. Kiba hearing this smirked dangerously and howled. Kankuro shit his pants again when Kiba jumped into the air and fused entirely with Akamaru. The creature that landed was something out of everyone's worst nightmare. It was a motherfluffing two-headed monster wolf with a glowing purple moon on the middle of its heads. It roared and licked its lips. Naruto cackling said behold the true purpose for my little prank during the end of the first exam. You see the day before the start of the Chunin exams I had a meeting with the honorable Inuzuka clan. Flashback no jutsu. Naruto was wondering why Kiba was at his front door growling under his breath. Naruto tilting his head asked what the hell are you doing here dog breath. Kiba growling said my mom and sister wished to speak to you oh honorable prince of heaven. Naruto smirking said damn I'd never thought I'd hear you say something like that dog breath. His smirk widened when Kiba grumbled even louder. Naruto laughing said relax Kiba, I'm just yanking your chain. Let me lock up and we'll head over to your place. Kiba smiled at this. Naruto locking his door held out his hand. Kiba blinked when a large white bird landed on his hand and walked up to his shoulder. Smiling Naruto said Kiba me Karara my mighty phoenix. Karara shaking her head nuzzled his face. Naruto giggling said her feathers are flames yet they feel like a warm breeze. He then smiling said she may look like she's my pet, but in reality she's my partner and can burn through anything that she comes across just like the flames of my aunt. He then shaking his head said, come on Kiba let's go. Kiba nodding started to walk with Naruto towards his home, the two of them talking about old times and his pranks. When they reached his home Naruto had Kiba rolling about his prank on Sasuke that turned his hair green. Naruto blinked spotting all of the puppies running around and the not so excited Inuzukas running after them. He turning to Kiba ask a new batch of puppies. Kiba sighing said yeah and they're even worse than the batch Akamaru came from. Naruto laughing said yeah that might be my fault, you know with my wolf powers. Kiba sighing said that's what mom thinks and that's why she wants to talk to you. Naruto scratching Karara on her beak said yeah I figured when you told me. They then reached their destination and Naruto's nose picked up the scent of beef and hold the phone was that Raymond. Kiba blinked and Naruto was a smoke outline. He sweat dropping said he's a prince yet he could easily be controlled with his abession of Raymond. He sighing walked inside of his home. Naruto now in a seat was itching to reach out and consume the Raymond in front of him, but years of watching the old man during procedures like this had drilled into him that he should resist such actions. Tsum spotting Naruto's state was surprised he hadn't attacked the Raymond. Hana on the other hand was fighting every bone in her body not to jump Naruto's bones right now. Naruto looking at Karara who was getting restless as fresh beef was in front of her, yet she hadn't gotten a single bite of yet said I really don't mean to sound impatient, but Karara is going to light this entire estate on fire if you don't inform us why we're here. Soon blinking said you're here because the Inuzuka clan wished to make a pact with you Prince Naruto. Naruto hearing the prince rolled his eyes and said it's just Naruto. The prince makes me feel like a spoiled brat, besides you've watched over me many times Tsum san Tsum smirking said well then brat, you can plainly see that our pups are have been affected by your wolf genes. They smell your aura just like I can and instantly realize that you are the alpha. All of our animals and most of our clan have realized this. Hana realized this the first time she saw you. Now my clan is heavily tied with animals and you being the son of one of my old teammates, I thought that it would be a good thing for the both of us if our clan had a pact. Naruto nodding to this said sound plan, but please inform me what exactly you want from this pact. Tsum blinked wondering how Naruto quickly cut through the bullshit so easily. Naruto smirking said oh come on Tsum chan I was practically raised by the Hokage. The old man tried to teach me everything he knew as someday I plan on taking over his job. I may not have understood it but anything that relates to the hat I paid close attention to. Politics aren't my thing but the old man was and still is a master at cutting through the bullshit and seeing through the red tape. Tsum laughing said damn brat. Well to put it frank the clan wants your help in making the Inuzuka stronger and possibly reaching the ultimate fusion with our partners. Naruto hearing this said so you would like for me to help you and your clan to become a Lycaner werewolf but not permanently. Tsum nodding asked, is it possible? Naruto snorting said Tsum you know me way better than that. I don't know the meaning of the word impossible. I might have to think a little and maybe speak with a few gods, maybe even an alternate version of me. Could possibly get it done, yes will take time to synthesize a prototype of it, but very possible. He then shaking his head said damn it, Karara-chan remind me to fucking strangle that version of myself from the 100th dimension, got me playing that cursed game. 
bloody more than solace. Soon, Hana and Kiba all blinked at this, while Karara hummed. Naruto then asked so what do I get out of this arrangement besides Raymond? Soon gained a large smirk on her face as she said oh you gain the hand in marriage of two Inuzuka women and become head of the Inuzuka clan. Naruto and Kiba both blinked at this. Naruto tilting his head asked what are you talking about Soom-chan. Soom laughing said what I'm saying is that myself and Hana are going to become your future wives. This will make you the head of the Inuzuka clan and Kiba your son-in-law. Naruto hearing this couldn't control himself. He hit the floor rolling in laughter with Karara now on the shell shocked Kiba's shoulder. When he finally stopped laughing he said oh that's perfect. Dog breath would be my son-in-law and I could finally make him take the bath he so needs. Kiba hearing this snapped out of his shock and growled out, you saying I stink dope. Naruto snorting said Kiba you smell so bad, my nose could pick your scent up from wave. Kiba growled at this and said that's it I'm gonna make you pay, prince or not. Naruto smirking cracked his knuckled and said bring it dog breath. I'll put you in your place. Kiba was about to leap at Naruto when he was pecked by Karara who squaked. Naruto started to tear up and was having a hard time holding his laughter in. Kiba glaring at the phoenix asked why did you peck me you stupid overgrown chicken. Karara pecked him again and squaked even louder. Naruto laughing said she is trying to tell you that I'd own you with one eye closed. He then standing up and getting back in his seat, coughed and said well then I agree to the terms and will send the old man a copy of the proceedings. Now that's the business is over. His eyes then transformed into bowls of Raymond as he screamed Raymond. Kiba, Hana, and Tsum all sweat dropped. Flashback no Jutsu Kai. Naruto smiling at the shocked looks on everyone's face, said that smoke bomb was really the prototype chemical compound created to create the transformation. May I present to you the DNA fusion of Kiba in Yuzuka and Akamaru, Lucian Blackwell. The wolf monster smirked and said this is so fucking awesome. Me and Akamaru are in total cinch. It then licking its lips asked ready to die puppet fucker. Then Kuro feeling his anger come back said bring it on freak. Lucian smirked and the battle began. Seconds later and Lucian was standing above the battered remains of Kankuro and his puppet. Naruto nodding his head said subject seems to have an excess of aggression. Most likely due to command given before transformation. Also could be due the DNA of Blood Wolf Clan or Niklas Michelson. Must adjust, then try again. Lucian blinked and transformed back into Kiba and Akamaru. The Jonin shaking his head said winner Kiba and Yuzuka of Kanoha. Someone get a cleanup crew to move the remains. Everyone was shocked at what had just happened. The next match was a Genin from Kanoha versus another Genin from Kanoha. Pretty soon it was Lee versus Gara. Sadly Lee was defeated, but not before Naruto informed Gara that he would be personally stamping his timesheet, sending him to the gaping maws of Shinigami. Now it was time for a match Naruto honestly wanted to see. Hinata versus Niji. Hinata glaring at Ino hanging off of Naruto, ignored every word that came out of Niji's mouth. Hinata turning to glare at Niji said, you will be going down Niji as I must prove my love for Naruto-kun and get that unworthy whore off of him. Naruto's eyebrow started to twitch at this and he could hear Ino growling. Said eyebrow started to twitch even more when he felt Ino's now very sharp claws dig into his arms. He then snorting let out a low growl and said Ino if you don't loosen that grip on my arm, I'm going to bite you and not the way you like either. Ino hearing this quickly loosened her grip. Naruto then watched as Hinata defeated the pompous Niji and glared at Ino. Ino glared right back at Hinata, and Naruto was kin to getting sick of it until he heard next match. Tsuchi Kin vs Higarashi 1010. Naruto blinked and turned to the trembling Kin. Smiling softly he said Kin-chan go out there and do your best. The moon, sun and the storm will watch over you. Kin looking at him with clear fear in her eyes, asked what if I'm not strong enough and make your name look bad. Naruto hearing this smiled and said Kin-chan, I really don't give a damn about my name. All I care about is that you give it your all, and if you go down, you go down swinging. He then still sensing a small amount of fear in her said as insurance, I think it's time I tried something I read about in the Uzumaki scrolls. He motioning for Ino to back up, forced a partial transformation, and ignored the searing pain shooting through his body. He making one of his canine teeth enlarge, ripped it right out of his mouth. Allowing his blood to soak the fang, he unleashed a full transformation. Tossing the fang into the air, he went through multiple hand signs. Finishing up he howled out hidden Yuzumaki Fuenjutsu. Creation of the Soul Slayer. The fangs started to glow. He then dropping to all fours, shook his entire body and howled deeply. Everyone gasped when a pair of glowing golden eyes appeared above him. Naruto then howled out O Shinigami, Queen of the Dead. I ask thee for the souls of Ringo Amaori, former member of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist and Senju Yuzumaki Mido, great wife of Senju Hashirama, and powerful member of the once great Yuzumaki clan. I offer you the soul of Kankuro Sabaku and Mamachi Zabuza in return. Everyone gained wide eyes when the two souls he asked for appeared and fused with the fang. Naruto smirking said I thank you Shinigami-chan. 
He then standing up slammed his hands on the fang and cried out Mokuten, nature's benefit. Everyone gasped when the fang was wrapped into a thick shell of wood. That shell broke seconds later to reveal a gorgeous sword with a wooden handle and a guard shaped like the kanji for fear. Naruto then shifting into his supernova wolf form, bite down on the fang and released searing hot flames down on the blade. He removing his mouth from it by once again tossing it into the air, shifted back into his human form. Grabbing the hilt of the brand new sword, he twirled it around and pointed it directly at Sasuke and said may I present to you Kinchan's very own weapon of immense power, blessed with the powers of supernova release and the Mokuten. Fused with the souls of Amaori and Mido, and given the power of fear. He then handing it to Kin said, it's up to you to learn her name Kin. Kin gently taking the weapon was looking at the new sword like it was a gift from God. She closing her eyes blinked hearing the name of the sword. Smiling she opened her eyes and said her name is Kaiofu no Haka Fear's Grave, Naruto smiling at her said she's yours Kinchan is my proof to you that no matter what happens during or after this match, I'll be proud of you. Kin hearing this was beaming. She then happily ran to the battlefield. Naruto shaking his head leaned against the rail, ignoring the greedy eyes of Sasuke, Sakura and Orochimaru. He blinked feeling someone nuzzle his face. Rolling his eyes said I'm not making you a sword Eno, so stop nuzzling me. The nuzzling stopped and Eno huffed. She leaning on his arm said you're such a good alpha and mate. You'll be a wonderful father. Naruto rolling his eyes said yeah whatever. All eyes except for Naruto's who staring at the curse seal on Sasuke's neck. He didn't like how evil that damn seal was, and honestly he wondered how in the hell did the snake come up with such a sick seal. His eyes then moved to Anko, as his nose had picked up the scent of more evil on her. He narrowing his eyes let his eyes roam her body. He finding her curse mark, instantly figured out why the villagers were so mean to her and why she had so few friends. He was about to say something when his eyes was drawn to the battlefield. The reason why was because the build-up of power coming from Kin. He smirking said Inochan behold the Shikai of the Soul Slayer. Ino hearing Naruto paid close attention to Kin who screamed out mankind's secret buried for centuries. Guarded by the darkness and coveted by the evil creatures. Found not lost by the undeserving eyes of a servant. Blessed by the son of the storms and nephew of the moon and sun. Break down the walls and blur the lines. Consume Kaiofu no Haka. Suddenly a dense shell of dark energy appeared around Kin. Naruto felt his eyes widen when the image of seven astral wolves appeared around Kin. The small black one with glowing pink eyes stepped forward and lunged into the shell. Naruto realizing what this was, threw his head back and let loose a howl. This action was copied by Kiba Akamaru and Ino. Everyone was confused until another howl was released, this time from the shell. The shell then broke down, and a changed kin was revealed. Her long black hair was now tied into a loose ponytail and was shining. Her skin was flawless, and her eyes were now pink just like the wolf. She was dressed in a type of armor never seen before. It was sectioned, starting at her shoulders, ending midway her bicep, started and ended at the elbows, then appeared again midway her tricep and covered her entire hand. It was thick on her chest area but spread out at her stomach, still somehow covering her sides. It formed a very short skirt, and then unlike the rest it covered all of her legs and her feet. The armor was dark gray, with the image of the moon visible on the back. The feet were actually shaped like a wolf's paw. Her sword was attached to her rear in the shape of a tail. If you looked closely you would see that there was chain connecting the sword to the armor. Kin then dropping down to all fours, growled a ten ten and said for the love and affection of Naruto and Inosama. She then dashed forward, and ten ten had to flip into the air to avoid being slashed in half by Kin's claws. Ten ten smiling said oh yeah I love it when I get a good fight. The battle then resumed and everyone was watching now, including Naruto. Ino watching as Kin's sword deflected a surprise attack from ten ten asked why did she say that Naruto come? Naruto smiling as Kin's sword shot out a 10-10 while Kin was spinning in the air, said Kin-chan is part of our pack, like Kiba and Akamaru. Yet she sees herself as a lowly beta to our alpha. She seeks to earn our love and affection, not knowing that she already has it, otherwise I wouldn't have given her a soul slayer. Ino hearing this snorted and said Naruto koi I get a cool power from becoming a part of the pack also right. Naruto smiling as Kin trapped 10-10 in an powerful illusion said yes my lovely Haim. I'm pretty sure you now have the Shoten release. Ino hearing this blinked and said, but I have my clan's Kekai Genkai. Naruto rolling his eyes said yes you do Ino Haim, but now because of your wolf and becoming my mate, you have the crystal release along with your clan Kekai Genkai. Ino hearing this smiled and couldn't wait to show Sakura her new bloodline. Naruto face palmed at this and said Ino Haim don't kill Kiba's soulmate. Ino hearing this pouted and said, but Naruto koi she's so annoying and makes the serious Kinoichi look bad. Naruto pinching the bridge of his nose, said I said no killing the pink-haired howler monkey Inoheim, keep arguing me, and I'll let Kachan teach you about the Yuzumaki traits, along with both of my aunts. 
The no blanched dramatically hearing this and said no don't do that Naruto koi. I'll be a good girl I promise. Naruto still holding the bridge of his nose said prove it. Ino nodding jumped down to the arena floor. Standing up she didn't bother to dust herself off she just glared at Sakura who had this smug smirk on her face. Ino still glaring asked what's with a smirk forehead. Sakura smiling said oh I just can't wait to see the look on your face when Naruto dumps you for me after I kick your ass here. Ino blinked and asked are you serious? Sakura snorting said of course I am piggy. Ino then started to laugh very loudly to the point that she was holding her sides. She ending her laughing ask you really don't get it do you forehead? Sakura blinked and asked get what piggy? Ino smiling said Naruto Koi will never pick you for a couple of reasons. She flipping her hair back said first he likes his women serious Kanoichi. Example, myself, Kin Chan, the crazy proctor to the second exam, the purple haired Anbu that he saved, Kurenai sensei. Sakura scowled at this. Ino then said second, Naruto isn't kidding when he says that you and Kiba are soulmates. It's one of the perks of being the child of a goddess in a natural born apex. Sakura was really shaking in rage now. Ino then said third, his girls have curves, as you can already tell, and sadly you're so flat a cardboard box looks like a better partner than you. By now the entire room was trying to hold back their laughter, and Anko was winking at Naruto. Naruto himself was banging his head against the railing. Ino then gaining a serious look on her face said lastly I'm the alpha of his harem, and I can see that as you are now, you're nothing but a gold digging whore who would happily fuck an old man if he promised to give you lots of money. Sakura screamed at this statement and said Proctor start the fucking match so I can make this bitch pay. The Proctor started the match, and like a fool Sakura rushed towards Ino who smirked. She dropping into a stance said foolish little monkey you fell right into my trap. From the battle style of my love and mate. To Jutsu, Crystal Wolf's Berserker Barrage. Her fist then drove right into Sakura's gut, making her eyes nearly pop out of her head. Ino then started to tear into Sakura, landing bone-breaking punches, kicks and even biting Sakura. What made matters worse is when Sakura started to move with each attack. Ino landing a deadly right hook sent Sakura flying across the floor. Everyone gained wide eyes when Ino shifted into her wolf form, with crystals clearly visible in her fur. She running in front of Sakura shifted back into her human form said, it's over. Lightning style, thunder punch. Her fist was then coated in thick yellow lightning, she hitting Sakura directly in the jaw, watched as Sakura collided with the statue, making a huge dust cloud appear. She crossing her arms smirked when Sakura was revealed to be unconscious and very hurt. The proctor quickly called the match in her favor and got Sakura help. Ino skipping upstairs sent a potent glare at Hinata and said see you at the finals bitch. Naruto ignored this and watched the board rotate through names, but knew there was no point as the only people yet to fight was Tamari, Shikamaru, Chaoji, Shino, Sasuke and himself. He figured that Shikamaru and Shino would face each other, then Chaoji would face Tamari. He was 100% accurate and Shikamaru ended up making it to the finals. Tamari destroyed Chaoji and sent her own glare at both Ino and Hinata. Naruto sighing started making his way towards the arena floor, already knowing that his match with Sasuke wasn't going to be pretty. He getting the floor rolled his eyes spotting the arrogant smirk on Sasuke's face. The proctor asked are both fighters ready? Naruto nodded while Sasuke continued to smirk. The proctor then started the match and moved back. The two of them were just standing there looking at each other, Naruto with indifference, Sasuke with an arrogant smirk. Sasuke then said dope if you create one of those swords for me like you did my future whore, then I'll go easy on you. Naruto hearing the insult at both himself and Kin growled and said duck ass if you apologize now I let you keep your ego. Sasuke laughed and said dope I am beyond you power now. Naruto rolling his eyes said sure you are and Kakashi sensei doesn't read porn. Sasuke scowling said I guess I'm just gonna have to show you who is the better. Naruto putting his hands in his pocket said yeah sure whatever. Sasuke spotting this snarled and said dope you get into a proper stance now. Naruto pulling a book out of his pocket opened it and started to read it. Sasuke spotting this roared and said dope look at your betters now. Naruto yawning turned to the proctor and asked I'm sorry did you say something. Sasuke screamed and launched at Naruto, who with the grace of a cat, dodged each of his sloppy attacks. Naruto getting behind Sasuke did a hand sign that made Kakashi's eyes widen. Said eyes widened even more spotting the sparks on the tips of Naruto's fingers. Naruto with an evil smirk on his face, said I'm borrowing this from Kakashi sensei's playbook. To Jutsu, 1000 years of death. Storm style he then shoved his fingers up Sasuke's ass. The boy shot into the air holding said thing. Almost everyone in the room was laughing hard, the exception being the awake and healed Sakura who was glaring at Naruto. Sasuke landing started to shake in rage. He then suddenly stopped and smirked. He looking at Naruto said that's right play your silly games dope. 
Once I defeat you, I'm going to track down your whore of a mother and take her, along with your aunts, and then I'll have my way with the Yamanaka and that former sound whore. Naruto hearing this, instantly lost all playfulness. He closing the book, tossed it into the wall. Naruto's face was a stone, not a speck of emotion could be seen. Ino spotting this said oh boy, duck ass just pissed off Naruto Koi. Kin standing beside Ino, said Naruto-sama is going to render him useless. Kiba licking his lips said this just might be the death of the Achiha clan in the village hidden in the leaves. Saratobi himself was shaking his head as he said foolish Achiha just crossed a line not even my foolish former student would cross. Suddenly a huge killing intent flooded the room and people started seeing the laughing face of the Shinigami. Then it suddenly got extremely hot inside of the room. Ino moving her eyes to Naruto, gasped. Everyone following her eyes gasped spotting Naruto literally smoking. Naruto growling clenched his fist and black flames appeared on his hands. Naruto then grabbing his left wrist unsealed soul edge. He lifting it up unleashed a hellish wave of malignant blood red energy. Everyone gasped when an eye opened up in the middle of the sword. Naruto's entire body then became coated in black flames that was burning the very ground he was walking on. Red chakra then shrouded Naruto and everyone that was alive during the Kaiubi attack gasped realizing that this was its chakra. Naruto then with a deep demonic voice said ancient eyes watch over the young. A king sits upon his castle mourning the loss of his son. His hand soaked in the blood of the innocent. Sleepless, he waits for the never-ending nightmare. Hungry he watches his prey. In rage he creates a blade. Forged from the flames of hell and fused with the souls of the wicked. She and her twin lock eternally in battle, waiting, watching praying for someone to find them. Burn with the flames of the eternally damned soul edge. Flames burst from every single spot on the floor, hell the proctor was standing beside the hulkage. The flames were so powerful Naruto couldn't be seen. When the flames died down a little everyone gasped spotting Naruto literally floating above the ground, billions of floating blood red swords spinning around him. Naruto's hair was braided and his muscles were rippling. He was wearing black hakama pants with torn edges. The flames now covered him much like armor and gloves could even be seen. Naruto glaring at Sasuke with blood red eyes said I'm going to make you wish you were never born a che. He then vanished and Sasuke screamed in pain as his right arm was now laying on the floor burning. Sasuke growling activated his Sharingan and attacked Naruto. The battle shook the building, even though it was very obvious who was winning. Suddenly a vile and evil chakra flooded the room. Sasuke appeared with his curse mark covering his entire body. He laughing said I'm going to kill you now dope. He then vanished again and Anko was about to jump in to stop the battle when a hand firmly grabbed her shoulder. She turning to look at who did so gasped finding a Amaterasu there with Tsukiyomi and Susanoo. All three goddesses had pissed off looks on their faces. Amaterasu making Anko move back said if anyone besides myself or my nephew even think of touching these flames, they will burn for all eternity in the pits of hell, no matter what they have done in their life. Sakura hearing this quickly moved away from the flames. Tsukiyomi scowling as Sasuke appeared with a new arm said, the foolish Achiha has pissed off my nephew and allowed Naruto to bond with the legendary cursed sword Soul Edge. Susanoo watching as Naruto appeared with huge fireballs in each hand said he's also using the full power of the supernova release. The Madarasu spotting Sasuke get hit with both fireballs said he's even creating sub-departments for said release. Tsukiyomi watching as Sasuke was blasted back said he has created six subcategories for it. Naruto then shoving his flames covered fist into Sasuke's gut said supernova release, subcategory I see you. Kidney. Sasuke then screamed and the smell of burning flesh filled the room. Susanu hearing this said Sachi just fried the Achiha's kidneys. Amaterasu said internal combustion unit. He can now target the internal organs with his supernova release. Naruto appearing on the statue opened up his hand and said supernova release, subcategory implode. Gravitational burn. Everyone watched as Sasuke was literally drawn towards a small black ball of fire. A small explosion appeared and Sasuke tumbled to the ground most of his body burned. Tsukiyomi said he just made the Achiha move to his attack, like a gravitational pull. Naruto appearing revealed the swords to be spinning fast now. He spreading his arm said Kenjutsu, a thousand blades of death. Everyone gained wide eyes when the sword started to launch at Sasuke, who was hit by ten at a time. The swords didn't remain in him, no they burned away. Leaving deep dark angry marks on his body. Naruto appearing in front of Sasuke, with a single finger pointed at the boy said supernova release, subcategory planetary. Mars. Everyone gained wide eyes when from Naruto's finger a ball of flames the size of a small planet hit Sasuke. All that could be heard was the sizzling of flesh. When the ball died down Sasuke was barely standing until once again he healed. Naruto then grabbing one of the swords said Kenjutsu, Dance of the Devil. He then vanished and appeared in short burst, each time leaving a huge slash on Sasuke's body. 
Naruto appearing with hand behind his back said supernova release, subcategory animal, roar of the mighty lion. Sasuke was then trapped in the circle of three mighty lions roaring, burning everything around him. Naruto then appearing in front of Sasuke opened his mouth and said supernova release, subcategory hell's own. Flaming artillery. Sasuke was then pelted by arrows from Naruto's mouth. He then flipping backwards, grabbed two blades with his hands, and then with a pair of arms that burst from his side, he grabbed two more swords. He taking a deep breath said Kenjutsu, bite of the almighty lunar wolf he then vanished and appeared behind Sasuke. A lone howl filled the room as Sasuke was blasted forward. Naruto then loosing the extra arms and dropping the swords, lifted both of his hands and said supernova release, subcategory to Satirology. F5 Tornado. A huge tornado of black flames appeared and picked up Sasuke, who was now screaming. When the tornado vanished to normal and barely alive Sasuke fell to the floor. Naruto walking up the thoroughly defeated boy grabbed him by the throat and said, let this be a lesson to you. Don't ever threaten my mother, my aunts, my himes or anyone else that I love. He loosing the flames and soul edge returning to her sealed state, said, don't push me Achiha, or next time I will kill you. He then let the boy go and walked away. The proctor shaking his head declared Naruto the winner and told everyone that the Hokage would let them know who they faced in the finals. Naruto hearing this rolled his eyes and said odds are, Ino is going to face Hinata, Tamari-chan is going to face Shikamaru, I'm going to face Gara, and Kiba faces the other Kanoha genin who made it. Everyone blinked at this, and Saratobi said damn it Naruto stop doing impossible things like predicting the matches for the finals. Naruto smirking said not a chance in hell old man, unless you give me the hat now and stop reading smut. Saratobi shooting up in his chair said I'll never stop reading my precious, no matter how hard you prank me. Naruto smirking even more asked so I can have the hat then. Saratobi said hell no you immature brat. You'll get this hat the day Jiraiya stops being a pervert and you marry a princess. Naruto with an insane gleam in his eyes asked is that a challenge old man? Saratobi nodded without thinking. He gained wide eyes when Naruto howled and said challenge accepted old man. Get ready to make me hokage. He then dropped a smoke bomb. Saratobi clearing it face palmed finding Naruto, Ino, Kin, Kiba, Akamaru, Susanu, Amaterasu, and Tsukiyomi gone. He dismissing the other teams cried and said damn you Naruto I'm getting way too old for this shit. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.